Kylie Jenner raised a lot of eyebrows when she threw a Handmaid's Tale themed birthday party for her friend at her home. Uh, and if you haven't seen the Emmy winning show, it shows a version of America where women's rights have been taken away and they don't have control over their bodies. Uh. Here's Kylie showing off the decor at the party. Hey guys. <gasps> Praise be. You know, the, the Handmaid's Tale is my favorite. It's my favorite show ever. <laughs> so. For Stoss's birthday, <laughs> welcome to Gilead. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, get your outfit. What the f did you do? <laughs> Happy birthday! Praise be vodka under his eye tequila. We got a little dinner. Everyone's names are letters. Look at my girls. Sophia. Praise be. Tiff. Under his eye. Praise be. My outfit! <laughs> my outfit! <laughs> okay, so Bradley Whitford, who joined The Handmaid's Tale last season, was on the talk yesterday, and here's what he had to say about the theme choice. Let's hear it. I don't know, it seems a little tacky. I mean... <laughs> You know, oh that costume is so kind of iconic, mm -hmm. and it's interesting how it's changed from initially a sort of a symbol of oppression mm -hmm. to now, as the show is moving ahead, to a symbol of, of resistance. So, yeah, a cocktail party seems to sort of dash all that significance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, I'm with him. I, I have a hard time after doing the everything we just did before this with John Stewart, right. And talking about that, I have a hard time rallying behind people who want to end Kylie Jenner for throwing a Handmaid's Tale party. You have a hard time with it? I do. I don't want to end her, but like, come on, girl. Like, uh, Zoe's saying Kylie knows nothing about Roe versus Wade. She's so dumb. Uh, Nelson says it's just a theme. Matt says I usually just go to the keg for my uh, birthday party. Same. Keg size it uh, all the way. Uh, Jesus, I'm ready to break the stilettos in half. Oh, yeah. I, the reason that people have this reaction to Handmaid's Tale is because so many people um, love the show. And that is a testament to the show. And it's a testament to the source material with what Margaret Atwood did. She hit on something. And they hit on something with that first season, anyway, of the show. That it was just all, an all-encompassing emotional everything with that with the show and with the stories and with the characters it was shocking and it's like vile and it makes you think and makes you angry but i think that a lot of people have to you have to step back that it is a it's a fictional show with fictional characters right okay but there are things going on in the states i get that, it i get it like abortion rights are being questioned i get it but okay you could take game of thrones that treats people the same way that they do and treats women, everything else, right. in the same way they do in Handmaid's Tale. But if somebody threw a Game of Thrones theme party, nobody would bat an eyelash. Right. Yeah, like that's the one element. It is a fictional thing, even though there are parallels to the real world. It is a fictional thing. Like I see this different than Adele's Titanic party. Like that struck me as a little inappropriate. I know she was basing it on the movie, but obviously it was a real life event and a lot of people died right. in a doing yes. a Titanic party. Yes. So that was a little bit different. Yeah, I get that Handmaid's Tale is a fictitious thing. But there are enough parallels to the real world, especially right now. It just seems like a little bit odd to do a party about it, like a little bit out of touch. Just because, and this, just because Kylie Jenner doesn't enjoy the show in the same way you do. Maybe right. she doesn't get the show. Maybe, maybe there's that, right? right? Maybe she doesn't. Maybe she looks at them and is like, "Oh my God, that does look sexy. Right. I would look super hot in that outfit." <laughs> maybe she is that way. I don't know, but I. Joey you says, can't fix all that. Why do we care about some entitled, privileged, rich kid thinks? Well, the reality is she, she's got, I don't know, how many millions of followers. People yes. are paying attention to what she's doing. So yeah. a lot of people and, saw that and, she and threw her hand And they've done this overstep. Like, that whole family, it's, it's so funny. For as popular as they are on social media, you know, some of the most followed people mm -hmm. in the world, 
when they do stuff like this, it uh, it's as, almost as if they don't have social media. Right, like they're not aware of the world. They're around not. Them they're just so not all. aware right. that this like would even so be a touch. reaction. Yeah, like so out of touch. Like you yeah. had to have seen at some point somebody in high school who put this on for Halloween, the costume, and then got murdered for it on Twitter. Like you had to have seen something like right. that. But it's the fact that they are so followed but yet seems so oblivious to what happens on social media that that is something in itself that's fascinating in all of right. this. Lou says, just enjoying the characters, the clothes, praise be. But, like, but the characters that wear those clothes are so repressed and they've gotten their rights taken away from them. They're abused by men and enjoy your party. <laughs> it's a different show enjoy to her. Enjoy your vodka. <laughs> it's, a different, it's a different show to her, man.